quick review about inverses to go through this. If I gave you a function, 3x um, plus 5 equals y, and I say find the inverse of that. Does anybody want to raise their hand and tell me what you're supposed to do to find the inverse? Does anybody remember? Yes? Um, get x equals um, flip yeah. x and y. Flip, flip x and y. Yeah, you flip x and y, and then what do you do? You solve for what? You flip the x and the y, and then solve for y, right? Exactly. So what you do is you just switch them. So now it's 3 times y plus 5 equals x. Exactly. You just swap x and y. Swap the x and the y, right? And then solve. Perfect. Right? That's how you find the inverse. Well, we're not going to be finding inverse with linear equations. All right? But you guys do need to understand that method because that, guess what? That works for all of our functions. If I say find the inverse of something, you know you want to swap the input and the output and then solve for your, for your new uh, output. So that's old news. So now in this case, ladies and gentlemen, if I say find the inverse, Without looking at how crazy that problem looks, you know that the first step I'm going to do is do what? Switch the x and the y. Oh, I didn't switch them. I just wrote it in blue. Okay. All right. So now you're thinking, um, hmm, that looks a little difficult to go and do. So now it's saying, so now I need to solve for y. All right? Now, ladies and gentlemen, we've done a lot of different types of problems. right? We've done problems where you have y's being multiplied by a number, so you divide. We have when a number is being uh, added to another number. So to solve for it, you subtract. right? We've had numbers that's been squared, so we took the square root. We've had numbers that have had the square root, so then we square. right? We've learned a lot of inverse operations, correct? Do I have to go through all the inverse operations, or are you guys following me with what I'm talking about? Right? So now we need to look at, so now I need to solve for y. I need to get y by itself. But now we look at this and we say, so when we said that, when we do that, we'd always say, all right, well, what's happening to y? Is y being added, subtracted, multiplied, divided, squared, square rooted? What's happening to the y? And then you look at this, you say, the y is in an exponent. How am I going to get this off the exponent? Right? Yes? OK. So what we're going to do, if we're, and what this is, is this is repeated with our multiplication. So what we're going to do is that's why we produce the logarithmic form. And that's really all exactly the logarithmic form represents. So what we can do is we can rewrite this in log form. So log, um, log base a of x equals y. So ladies and gentlemen, now what we have just created is a logarithmic form. So when we're talking about an equation, since it has an exponent, this is what we call exponential. And this is what we call logarithmic. <coughs> All right, and I'll use some numbers so it makes a little bit more sense. Yes? Um, when you had, I don't know, when did you use like when you had the exponent and then you like, oh, is that only when the log is actually in the exponent? It's like when you put it in front and you multiply it by the We'll get to those, yep. We'll get to those. Um, so those are going to be, so everybody has your exponential, and here's logarithmic form. And all logarithmic form says, if you guys want to write this out, because I think this helps, all logarithmic says, if you want to say log ax equals y, well, first of all, this says log. How we say this is log base a of x equals y. That's what it says, what it means. So when I write that out, and you'll write that, and I say, you know, log base a of x equals y. So that's what it says. What that means is a raised to what power? Equals. 
x. You might say, well, equals y. Yeah, I know it equals y. But what, when you're thinking of the logarithm, what it really it says is, what I'm really asking is, a, <clears throat> where it raised to what power is going to equal your x. That's what that really represents when we're taking the log base a of x. It just represents a raised to what power equals your x value. OK? So then y is going to be the power that you're going to have to raise it up to. OK? Hello.